Köszöntöm a nézőket! 2022. november 6-a. Magyarország Melbourne-i főkonzul Geiger Mihály és családja a Melbourne-i Magyar Televízió munkatársa kíséretébe a Kászolmányi Buda kastélyba látogatott. Kérem tartsonak velünk, önök is részesei lehetnek ennek a látogatásnak. Megtekinthetik a Levi család szobáit, amilyen magyar családnak az emlékeit őrzi. Köszönet a könzulúrnak, a Kászolmányi Buda Kastély őrzőbizottságnak az engedélyt és a vendéglátást. Külön köszönet a Tomasevszki házaspárnak, aki Brehems magyar rapszódia táncát adták elő a magyar család tiszteletére és emlékére. Szép jó napot kívánok minden tévénézőnek. Szeretném megköszönni a lehetőséget a melbourne Magyar Televíziónak és a munkatársainak, hogy ma szólhatok Önökhöz. Egy nagyon szép és érdekes helyről, a régi viktóriai aranymezőkről, a Buda villából. Ez melbourne körülbelül egy másfél óra járásra van autóval, mindenkinek ajánlanám, hogy jöjjenek el, hiszen ez az itteni magyar örökségünk egy kis része. A nevéből következik Buda, Buda Villa, hogy magyar alapította, egy magyar úriember régi Magyarországról, a magyar királyság területéről, Szlovákiában született 1818-ban az úriember, Ernő volt a becsületes keresztény magyar neve, világjáró volt, aki megjárta Luxemburgot, Hollandiát, Nagy-Britanniában telepedett le, és onnan költözött ide át Ausztráliába, a legjobb tudásom szerint, és itt szerzett hírnevet magának. Én minden egyes tévénézőt, és az, aki nézi, legyen szíves, adja át az ismerősének, hogy mindenképpen látogassanak el ide, hiszen ez egy nagyon érdekes és magyar vonatkozású, szép és gyönyörű ház a kertel együtt. Szeretném ismételten megköszönni a tévénézőknek és a magyar televízió vezetőségének, hogy önökhez szólhattam a mai napon. Viszontlátásra! The life story of Ernest Lavini is one of extraordinary determination, vision and accomplishment. His achievements stand out, gained on a journey that took him from the artistic centres of Europe to the gold fields of Australia, leaving a legacy that continues to this day. Born in 1818 in the village of Georgenburg, northern Hungary, Lavini trained as a silversmith and jeweller in Budapest later travelling to Vienna and Italy as a journeyman craftsman, furthering his skills along the way. By 1843, aged 25, he was working in Paris, immersed in the rich cultural milieu and finding inspiration in the works of the Renaissance masters. Three years later, by now a skilled jeweller and fine metal master, Lavini arrived in London, setting up business in partnership there with Frederick Bucca. When the Hungarian Revolution broke out in 1848, he extended his benevolence to many of his countrymen who had fled their homeland, seeking refuge in Britain. Strong friendships were formed between them, and Lavini's deep affection for the country of his birth remained with him throughout his life. His manufacturing goldsmiths and jewellers' business flourished, and Lavini's skills as a designer and jeweller were in demand. The heavily gem-set Britannia pendant, made from his design, was shown in the first great exhibition of 1851 at the Crystal Palace in London. The very same year saw the start of the Australian gold rush. Incredible stories gripped the world, tales of untold wealth, and a new land of unparalleled opportunity for those who dared to venture to these foreign shores. Lavini dissolved the business partnership and set sail from London in 1852 with mining machinery 
and four labourers destined for Victoria. Arriving in Melbourne, he travelled to Forest Creek, where the picturesque town of Castlemaine now stands. He was to encounter setbacks, firstly when his labourers deserted him, and then finding his machinery was unsuitable for alluvial gold mining. Undaunted, Lavini sensed opportunity in the rich throng of fortune seekers. Starting up in business as a jeweller and watchmaker, he quickly attained success retailing wares, buying gold from the diggers and manufacturing jewellery and ornaments in his workshop. With financial stability, Lavini's irrepressible creative nature emerged once again. In 1855, he commenced work on the colonial gold and red gum inkstand, featuring intricately detailed figures and four pure gold nuggets. This heavily ornamented piece was exhibited in Melbourne to great acclaim before travelling to the London International Exhibition of 1862, where it drew a great deal of admiration. Around 1859, Lavini produced the silver standing cup centrepiece. This astoundingly detailed work was lauded for its fine embossing, chasing and meticulously cast figures and ornaments. It successfully combined traditional allegorical figures with uniquely Australian motifs such as indigenous fauna and gold miners. These complex masterpieces reflect Lavini's skill, creativity and mastery of precious metals. They epitomise the great wealth, ambition and pride of the young colony of Victoria, created from the very minerals that shaped her destiny. By 1863, now aged 45, Lavini retired to live comfortably on his investments. In the same year, he purchased Delhi Villa, later renaming it Buda after Budapest in his homeland. From here on, until his death in 1905, he contributed to the community, supporting health, business and infrastructure projects in the developing region. His children continued in his footsteps, contributing significantly to the social and artistic life of the local community into the 20th century. Lavini's remarkable life has been commemorated with the establishment of a biennial silver exhibition. Commenced by Buda Historic Home and Garden in 1988, the exhibition showcases contemporary Australian silver and metal smithing and has become an important event in the calendar of silversmiths nationwide. Furthermore, the Lavini family home, Buda, has become a hub of creative expression in the region. The house and garden bear testimony to Ernest Lavini's vision and inspiration as well as being a unique and exceptionally beautiful destination that draws visitors from around the world. Hello, welcome to Buddha Historic House and Garden. My name is Christine. I'm a volunteer guide here. There are lots of volunteers who work at Buddha to keep it going. Before we start, I'd like to acknowledge that we are here on Jajawaran country. I'd like to pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, and thank them for their custodianship of this land. We're here at the house of Ernest and Bertha Lavini. This is a house museum. So most of the things you'll see in this house belonged to the family. They were an artistic family, and you'll see lots of beautiful handmade things and hand collected art as you go through the house. This is the entrance of the house. We have a beautiful example of the Hungarian connection to the house. This is our fabulous flame tokay. It's a beautiful dessert wine. As you can see, it's showing its age a little bit now, but it still produces beautiful grapes every year. Ernest Lavini came to Castlemaine to the gold rush in the 1850s, he had been a journeyman jeweller and um, silversmith. He learned his skill mainly in Europe. He had a shop in London before he came here and he was only coming here for three years to make his fortune. He stayed here and made his life here. He married his second wife, Bertha Hudson, 
and they came to live in this house in 1864. They had 10 children who were all um, born in the house. Only two of the children died when they were small children and the rest of the children um, worked, studied, travelled. Some of them lived here all their lives um, and collected and made a lot of the beautiful things you'll see in the house. The family tree shows you Ernest's um, descendants. There are a lot more now and we need to write some more on the bottom of the wall. This is mother's bedroom. Ernest married Bertha in Tasmania and he brought her here to this house as a bride. She was 20 years old. This room was her personal room. There is a little door that connects into what was Ernest's room as well and was used early on as a nursery. Bertha's room shows some of the accoutrements of a young woman. She, I particularly like the hair extensions. It also shows um, a feature of the house that shows that it was a house that was lived in. There's a beautiful oil lamp over on the stand and it's now electrified. When mother found out that you didn't have to clean your oil lamp every day, she was very happy to go and get things updated. Ernest was born in Hungary in a small village near the Tatra Mountains. He's not in Hungary anymore, but he was very proud of his Hungarian heritage. When he came to Australia, he brought with him his skills as well as his belongings. He was an accomplished silversmith. He was also a watchmaker, a clockmaker, and he had learnt his skill mainly in Europe. The beautiful lost wax method of working was one of his accomplishments. When he came to Australia, he bought his traditions and his skills, and then he used them with local materials. He made a lot of silver work using emu eggs. He used local motifs, so local animals like emus, kangaroos. Ernest also used his skill to make commissioned items. Miners would bring their gold to him and he would make items for them. He designed a lot of jewellery. Uh, the beautiful designs on the wall were his. We only have one example of a piece of his jewellery here in the cabinet. It's a beautiful gold and emerald bracelet. He worked in silver, mostly, and he made works on commission. He made the beautiful saint cup, which you can see in the Ian Potter Gallery as part of the National Gallery of Victoria. It's on the first floor in the colonial art section and you can see the example of his work. We have a black and white photograph of it here which doesn't do it any justice and it's worth going to Melbourne to have a look at it. Ernest's friends in London must have thought it was going to be a really dangerous place in Australia because they gave him this pair of dueling pistols to defend himself. My understanding is that they were never shot in anger. Ernest planned to build his dream home about another kilometre further down out of town on a site that's now called Kaweka. He bought the land and he planned the house. There are lots of drawings of the house. He planned the garden. If you go to Kaweka now, you will see that the garden has still the same plan. I believe that Ernest may have planted some of the trees there. The house was never built because my understanding is that Bertha didn't want to move from here. Ernest then proceeded to sell that land to someone else and he did renovations on this house and extensions and we'll go into one of those rooms now. We're standing in the music room. The music room was used for all sorts of things apart from playing music. There were parties and balls here and it's got some lovely examples of paintings that were collected by the family. This painting was by Mr. Karpathy, who was Hungarian. They had a lot of Hungarian visitors. They were very proud of their Hungarian heritage and there are lots of other features in the house that show it. When Ernest retired, he took up painting as one of his hobbies because he was a very artistic man. This brings us to the end of a short tour of Buddha. There are lots more stories to tell and there is a lot more to see. Thank you very much for your attention. I'd also like to say thank you to the Consul 
and the Hungarian television crew who came today. And I'd like to welcome all of your viewers to come and see Buddha for yourselves. Welcome to Buddha Historic Home and Garden. My name is Vivian Hamilton and I'm the Admin and Communication Manager here. And I'd like to take you on a brief familiarisation tour. So, come on in. This is the entrance to the house where you can come through and take a self-guided tour before you wander around our three acres of heritage garden. Or, by prior arrangement, you can book a group tour and we'll have a specialist tour guide waiting for you. This is our gift shop where we showcase a range of Buddha merchandise and locally handcrafted artisan wares. Buddha is an accredited house museum was occupied continuously by the Lavini family for 118 years when the last surviving daughter, Hilda, died at the age of 98. Hello, my name is Loretta Zillis and I'm the house curator here at Buda. It's been fortunate, I guess, um, while we've been closed to the public, that we've been able to progress with quite a few projects around the house during closure. So what we've been able to do is some re-rendering and repairs to the front of the house as well as repairs to the plaster work and some repainting of the interiors. So it's been a fabulous opportunity there to get some of those things done. Uh, we've also been working on the collection and some reinterpretations of the displays inside the house and the volunteers have also been working on some new tours so that when we reopen to the public we'll be more than ready to welcome them with open arms with some new and fresh and exciting things to offer. 
Collected by the Lavini daughters and hanging on the walls at Buda are the works of many popular and emerging Australian artists from the first part of the 20th century, particularly women artists such as Margaret Preston and Ursula Ridley Walker. The arts and crafts movement was a major influence on the handcrafted work made by the Lavinis to decorate the interior of Buda. Hi, I'm Jill. I work in the garden here at Buda and I have the pleasure of working with a group of volunteers on a regular basis in this incredible historic garden. It's looking a hundred bucks at the moment. Lots of flowers coming out for spring. We're looking forward to sharing this gorgeous garden with you again in the near future. Stay safe and well. You can also order a gourmet picnic hamper to have in the grounds at Buda with fresh seasonal produce and they're fully self-contained with a picnic rug, thermos and fine china. They also feature recipes direct from the diaries of the Lavini women. Just check our website for details. We also have the garden room venue available for hire at Buda which is perfect for a garden style wedding. It can be set up in a variety of different configurations and is also perfect for seminars and corporate events, funerals or parties. It has a commercial kitchen or we can organise a variety of catering options for you. It also includes the use of the formal garden for mingling, for photos, or for a larger style wedding for up to 150 people, you can set up a marquee. The Buddha garden is stocked by replacements of plants, all grown from seeds, cuttings, bulbs, corms and tubers collected from the historic garden. You can also buy these plants that have been propagated as tube stock. We also stock locally propagated indigenous plants from Newstead natives and also hardy plants that are suitable for the goldfields area. So we do hope you've enjoyed your brief tour and uh, we hope to see you here really soon. Good day for everyone. I most welcome all of the Hungarians who are watching now the television, Hungarian television. And I would like to express my sincere thanks to the local organizer and the Heritage Foundation of Castle Maine, which organization is taking care of the Buddha Villa here for many decades. This villa was owned by a Hungarian person for more than 118 years. Uh, what is even more important, I would like to encourage every member of the Hungarian community to come and visit this beautiful Hungarian Victorian heritage site and uh, through the visits we might be able to help and raise some kind of funds for preserving this beautiful garden and local heritage. Thank you for your attention.